Hola, mi nombre es Freddy Dabla Inglés y es Catherine. Hola. Hoy vamos a hablarte de Aptis Advanced. Vamos a dar un pequeño curso de Aptis Advanced, que es un examen de British Council, un examen computer based, que quiere decir que todas sus partes se hacen en un ordenador. Incluso el speaking y el writing, que no lo haces en frente de un examinador, sino que lo haces también en el ordenador. Aptis Advanced tiene cinco partes: speaking, writing, reading, listening, and grammar and vocabulary. We're going to start speaking about the speaking component, which lasts like 12 minutes, and it has three parts. The first part of the speaking is compare the pictures and the following two questions, which will be related to the picture. And each question is 45 seconds long, and you do not have any time to think about the question. In part two, you have three questions, and these three questions appear at the same time. You have to speak for two minutes and you have one minute to prepare. So be organized, answer all three questions because if you don't, you will be penalized. And then you have part three. Part three is a presentation that you have to provide, give to the um, presenter. And it's one minute preparation and then it's one minute 30 speaking. In this part, I would suggest introducing the topics, such as giving. Um, There are many advantages and disadvantages to being to and then insert the topic and then say one advantage, a connector, another advantage, and then say something along the lines of there are many that however it is not all that glitter, and then a disadvantage, connector, and then disadvantage. When you finish doing the presentation, which as she said, uh, lasts one minute and 30 seconds, you have an extra question. This extra question appears in the screen and uh, you need to speak for 45 seconds. This is a question based on your opinion about the previous topic for the presentation. 45 seconds and you have no time to prepare, remember. That would be the end of the speaking component. Now we're going to talk about the writing component. The writing component takes 45 minutes. It has three parts. For the first part, you have a chat. It's a kind of social network interaction. You have three questions and you're supposed to write in an informal register, in an informal style. So these three questions are like if you were on a, on a Facebook chat or something similar. And um, they're asking you questions related to a club, like a fashion club or a reading club. Um, questions like, why did you join this club? or Or why are you so interested in reading? These kind of questions, and you just need to be natural. Guys, it's very important that you don't take too long to answer these three questions because they are the easiest uh, questions, and you're going to need more time for the next uh, part of the exam. So remember, three questions to have a maximum of uh, 40 words. Still, you need to check the number of words on the exam because it could change. At some point, the same format, but the number of words could change. Just make sure you check the number of words. You don't, you don't write any more words than they are asking you to write, nor less words than they want. Okay, so that's the first part. Remember, a chat, a social uh, interaction kind of um, writing, and then you move on to part two. Part two is a formal email, and it will always have three notes, and you have to include all the notes into the email and some of the notes will also have questions sometimes so what you need to do with the questions is reformulate or rephrase the questions and there's a clear structure that we can go with the email with formal email to start with dear sir madame or to whom it may concern and then have an introduction statement to introduce the topic for example I have recently received an email from your office stating and then the problem and then continue with the first point. For example, first and foremost, then you talk about the problem and then the suggestion. In, for introducing the suggestions, I would suggest saying, I would suggest or I suggest and then have the problem. Secondly and lastly, and then to um, end the um, formal email, I would suggest saying, Thank you for my, the email. I hope that my suggestions are taken into consideration. Yours sincerely and then your name. Okay, that is part two, an email. And then you have the, well, what students think is the, the most difficult part, which is the writing uh, of, the, of an article. 
and this article um, is more formal than informal, okay? But still, you know, it's open, more open than an essay. Um, you're supposed to, to use statistics that they give you on a, in, the, in the statement, um, and you have some notes as well. So you need to include everything they give you in the, in the task. Um, my recommendation, our recommendation is to start your, your article with a question, a rhetorical question. Uh, obviously, this question should be related to the um, subject, the topic that you're supposed to, to, to develop. So, a rhetorical question, something like, if it's about electric cars, something like, um, how important is it for the environment that uh, we use electric cars? Something like that, and then you answer this rhetorical question, something like, many people believe that, and then you start giving your, your opinion. They give you some notes that you're supposed to include, please check the, the, the statistics, see which is the, the, the maximum number, the minimum number, the statistics, mention this as well and then finish with the conclusion, okay? This is one of the many ways for you to do an article, but it's very important that you have a structure so you don't uh, waste your time thinking how to start and how to uh, end. You have up to 220 words to finish the article. And that would be the end of the writing component. Remember, you have 45 minutes for all this. Now we have the reading component, and you have four parts. Part one is opinion matching. So you have four opinions, person A, person B, person C, person D, and then you have seven questions following the four opinions. And you have to match the questions as to whether or not you think person it's person A, person B, or person C, or person D. Okay, thanks. One, one tip, or oh, uh, oh, a piece of advice for this uh, task one, is um, avoid just uh, reading everything and then reading the opinions. No, read person A and then say who said what, okay? And then you read person B and just say, if I like, select the, the, the right opinion for this person, and then C and then D, okay? Don't like read them individually and assign this person to the opinions and then you go ahead to the next people coming. Okay, do not read person A, B, C, D and then uh, assign this I mean, you won't remember every single thing after reading everything, okay? That's a very good, um, oh, that's my recommendation for you to do part one. Then you have part two, matching the headings. In this part, in task two, you are supposed to um, read some paragraphs and then assign each paragraph to each title to say which is the best title for um, each text in the, in the task. So you have one extra heading here to confuse you a little bit. Part three is a short text um, around 300 words and it's missing gaps. And you never have to write anything in this um, part. It's just um, a drop box and you have to pick which option you think it's, is correct. And it's based more on grammar and syntax, this part. Okay, and then you have the last part of the reading component, which is part four. Here you have another fill in the gap exercise, but this one is supposed to be a little bit uh, more difficult because you have two texts, those textos, and uh, you have again some gaps for you to fill, but um, all the options are grammatically correct. So just one option is correct based on the uh, context. Basically, with this fill in the gap exercise, they are assessing your uh, reading comprehension. So uh, don't just go with the first one you think is, is correct because you need to read the whole thing before you um, select the right option for this, uh, for this task, okay? And this will be the end of task four for the reading component in Active Advanced. Now we have the listening component. For the listening component, we have four parts, and you're going to have 30 minutes for everything. Part one is five questions, and there's one question, there's one question per part, and um, you have three options, and you have to pick which one is correct. Okay, part two, you have three questions. Basically, three audios, and each audio, which could be a conversation or a monologue, has Two questions. So you have three audios and two questions in part two. 
Part three is a man, woman and both. So you're going to listen to a dialogue between two people and there are going to be seven questions that you have to pick whether or not the man is saying it, the woman is saying it or both of them are agreeing on the topic that is being spoken about. And finally, in task four, you're going to have two monologues and each monologue has four questions. And these questions are not always in order of appearance. So um, that makes it obviously a little bit more difficult. It's important to say that you can repeat task one and task two, but you cannot repeat, you cannot listen twice, uh, part three and part four. So our recommendation, guys, is to make notes all the time. You need to learn how to make notes while you are listening. That this is an incredible um, strategy and uh, most students don't know how to do it. So work on this before you do your exam. And this will be the end of the listening component. And finally, we have the grammar and vocabulary component, which is one component, okay? These two uh, parts are in the same component. First, we have the grammar. The first, so the first part is you have 25 questions related to grammar and in each question it's going to be a multiple choice so you'll never have to write anything it'll just be a question multiple choice three options that best fit the sentence that's presented to you when you finish the grammar part then you have the vocabulary test the vocabulary test has five parts and each part has five questions so there is a total of 25 questions. So basically we have 25 questions for grammar and we have 25 questions for vocabulary. The vocabulary is based on collocations, synonyms and definitions and uh, uh, completing sentences as well. These four things are um, the main uh, characteristics of the vocabulary test. You have 25 minutes to finish um, the whole grammar and vocabulary exam, which we think is, um, is a good Time is enough, and uh, our recommendation, guys, that you should study the, the, the most uh, common things that appear in this uh, test. Things like the basic conditionals, report speech, and passive voice, and some phrasal verbs, as well as the tenses like future past and, and present. These uh, things, which are um, basically the base of grammar are in abdice. and as Catherine said, um, you're not supposed to write anything, you just click on the right answer, so this makes the whole thing a lot easier. So make sure you study your grammar before doing the exam, because the grammar and vocabulary uh, component is the most important component, because they uh, this is the one which says what mark you need in the other four components for them to give you a, a B2 or a C1. Remember, this is a multi-level exam and it's not like there is one exam for C1, one exam for C2. No, no, no. no. You have um, Aptis Advanced and with this exam you don't fail. I mean, you can get a B2, you could get a C1, you could get a C2. It's the same exam for uh, these people. Um, it's not uh, valid for people who need to get a B1 level. But um, depending on the mark you get, obviously you get one level or the other. So very important that you know that, that you're not, um, that you don't do the wrong exam, that you know that you're looking for a C1 or a C2 level. All right, so this is the end. Remember, um, we are in Madrid, our Iglesia Academy is in Madrid, and I am leaving our phone number and our contact details so you can call us if you have any more doubts about the Actis exam.